Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video of Math Mondays, we are finally getting to the theory of electromagnetism, or electricity and magnetism squished together because it turns out they're the same force. Woo, so cool. Okay, so in this video, we are going to get an introduction of electromagnetic theory, what's the fundamental question, and we'll dig a little bit into electrostatics. So we'll build up the theory a little bit by bit. We are going, I'm not going to cover everything, but I'll cover some of the major topics in electromagnetic theory. Um, if there's something that you would like me to cover, please let me know. Okay, cool. So in physics, engineering, and science, and honestly, life in general, a lot of the time what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what is a good question for us to ask to solve our problem. Our question needs to be simple and straightforward and yet meaningful. And so in electromagnetic theory, the fundamental question that we are asking is what happens when we have a bunch of charges, we'll call them source charges, and they are gonna be tiny purple dots that are really hard to see on the screen. What happens when we have a bunch of these test charges? How do they interact with this charge over here which I'm going to call the source charge. I'm going to label it with a capital Q. Um, so how do these charges affect this charge? Keep it simple. That's our fundamental question. Now, that fundamental question can get really complicated really quick because there's all sorts of moving pieces. Literally, sometimes these charges are moving and they move at the speed of light, so that's really fast. Oh my gosh, ah, it's okay. We'll start simple. Electrostatics, stationary. Um, so, uh, yeah, keep it simple, build it up from there. Like, what's next on my notes? I forgot, I totally blanked. Um, okay, so, uh, it can get really complicated, but when we remember the goal of our theory, we're saying, okay, well, how do I build up an understanding of the situation from the simple pieces? And so in this situation, I'm going to grab my little purple dots. So we can assume that we know where our source charges are. And let's say we have some equation that describes their uh, position as a function of time. And what we are interested in figuring out um, is what happens to our test charge? Where does it go? Well, that's what we need to calculate. Um, so one of the really cool things in EM theory is that the principle of superposition applies. And what this tells us is that we can actually, um, uh, oh my gosh, hold on. Uh, so this means that we can assume the interaction between any two given charges is independent of the rest of the charges. Wait, what? That seems a little wild. Well, yeah, it is. It's totally wild. And it only holds because of the format of the equation um, for the electric field. Um, but basically what it says is that um, when we're trying to figure out how these charges are influencing this test charge, we can ignore all of the charges except for one, calculate that force between those two, and then we can move on to the next one, calculate this second force, and then move on to the next one. And then we can add all of them up in a vector sum. Um, so these are vectors, they have a size and a direction. Um, so basically we're like, okay, force one, that's a funky F, plus uh, the, uh, the force between the first charge and our test charge, plus the force between the second one and our test charge, plus the force between the third one and our test charge, and so on. Okay. That's pretty wild. Well, you can kind of think about it like a game of uh, pool. So let's say that this is our cue ball. We hit the cue ball um, and it hits one of these and then it goes on and hits the other ones. Or if you're starting in that triangle formation, at any given time, uh, you can calculate the trajectory of a ball by focusing on the interaction between just two of the, uh, two of the billiard balls. Okay, so... Um, uh, now that we understand that, uh, let's start with a simple case in um, electrodynamics. We're going to go to electrostatics. So electrostatics, electricity static, electrodynamics, electricity dynamic, movement. Ooh. So electrostatics, 
um, is uh, the study of stationary charges. Woo! So we're going to assume that our source charges are not moving. Cool. And uh, we are going to take, I'm going to get rid of this because it's right in my way. So this is one of those equations, Coulomb's law, which unfortunately we can't derive, or maybe for better or for worse, this is where the experimentalists come in and they're like, I got you, boo. And you're like, thank you. This took you a really long time and it was really hard. So thank you. So Coulomb's law tells us the force between two uh, charges at rest. And so, well, I was going to say at rest in kind of quotes of like, well, they're at rest for now. So we're at kind of a frozen point in time. Um, so Coulomb's law is one over four pi epsilon naught. This test charge is kind of hanging out there. Um, times uh, our source charge, the size of our source charge, times the size of our test charge, divided by the uh, distance between them squared. And it points um, in the direction of uh, the two uh, charges. Oh, no, let me draw a picture because it's like, wait, what did you just say? Um, okay, so we have our source charge here that is influencing or exerting a force on this charge. And this distance here is this script R. Now this is a vector and you're like, what the heck is this vector doing? Okay, well, let's back up. And if we were to draw a plot and say this is X and this is Y. Um, so we have our source charge here. This is not going to, this is a little rotated a little bit, um, but this should hopefully give you a picture. Um, so this would be, we're going to call this R prime. Um, that's one vector. This is going to be R vector. And so this is script R. Um, so script R vector is going to equal um, this vector to our test charge minus uh, the vector to our source charge. Um, and so the force points um, along the line of interaction between the two. Um, so it's repulsive, meaning our test charge is going to go pew, it's going to be pushed away if uh, our charges have the same sign. In other words, if they're both positive or they're both negative, the force will be positive. It will point outward and this charge will be like, oh, wow. Um, if they are the same, uh, sorry, if they're the opposite sign, then our force is going to be negative if it's like that. And the force will point from our, te from our test charge to our source charge and it'll go, shoot, I am attracted to you. Very cool. Um, cool. Okay. So this is where our ability to read equations starts to really come in handy for figuring out how these equations give us information about the world around us. So, okay, in addition to figuring out the sign of the force or the direction of the force, um, what this equation tells us, so uh, this is a constant called the permittivity of free space. Um, so just a constant. Um, I think it's like 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th. Uh, hold on, Coulomb squared over Newton per meter squared. Whoa, that's not a two, that's a line. Um, let me double check that. 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th. Yeah, cool. Um, and then you have pi. Pi seems to show up all over the place, which is pretty cool. Um, our universe is magical and mysterious. Um, so this is all just a constant. Can't change that. That's staying the same no matter what charges we've got and where they are in space and time. But what we can change is say, okay, well, let's say we made uh, one of these charges bigger. Since these are on the top, it's directly proportional to the force. So if the size of these charges increases, it increases the force between the two of them. Super cool. So that means if this charge gets bigger, this charge goes flying off at a much faster rate. Um, and the other thing that we can change is the distance between the two. So because this is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, that means if we move the charges really, really, really far apart, their force between them is going to be super, 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 super small, and they probably won't influence each other at all, at least to our eyes um, or our senses. Um, and so if we move them really, really close together, it means the force increases a lot and uh, they will uh, interact a lot more in the same way um, that increasing the charges 
increases the force. If we decrease the distance between the two of them, the force will increase. Super cool! So I love the ability when we understand what the equations are telling us and how to look at the kind of the shape of the equation, we can get some really cool information out of it. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with a challenge. And that challenge is if we have a test charge Q in the middle of eight equal charges around the outside, um, what is the total force on the test charge in the middle? They are all equidistant um, from the center. They're all equally spaced. They're all the same magnitude, etc. There's eight of them. What will the force on the charge in the middle be? Hmm. Use Coulomb's law and the principle of superposition to figure it out. And we will talk about that in the next video where we look at the electric field. Yay! All right. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!